Yeah. Minister, as I'm sure you are aware, um, there is growing concern uh, in the wider Cork area in relation to the future of our airport, uh, which has unfortunately seen a reduction of passenger numbers of the order of 5% in 2014 and is likely to see a similar uh, reduction again in 2015 because of the full year effect of some of the uh, services that we have lost during the course of 2014. And that's against the backdrop of the other main airports in the country uh, growing very substantially, Shannon Airport uh, and indeed Dublin Airport. And it goes without saying, Minister, that Cork Airport has great strengths, uh, very modern facilities, a new terminal, a large population base, a strong track record of customer service. But the reality is it is struggling, uh, and it is struggling badly. And the reality also, Minister, is that the new arrangements at Shannon Airport have resulted in Cork having a competitive disadvantage. Uh, the new arrangements at Shannon have distorted the market. The fact that Cork Airport is now competing uh, with a newly independent Shannon Airport, uh, which is also debt-free and which has the benefit of a stream of income from Shannon Commercial Enterprises. And I'm not sure anyone really thought through the consequences for Cork Airport uh, of uh, the new arrangements and the restructuring that have taken place in Shannon. And it's not a Cork versus Shannon thing. Uh, we wish Shannon well and best of luck to them. They seem to have got a very good deal uh, from the government uh, and we wish them well uh, in their own future. Uh, but from a Cork perspective, it has had direct consequences. Uh, Ryanair have transferred a number of services directly from Cork Airport to Shannon Airport and more fundamentally, Cork Airport Airport's capacity to compete is seriously impaired. Uh, Cork Airport is not in a position to offer uh, free charges for a period of five or six years, which it is reported Shannon has done, for example, uh, in relation to Ryanair. We're simply not in a position to do that. Cork Airport ha is not grant aided from the state in any way. Uh, it has no uh, state subsidy, no PSO. PSO routes, for example, uh, we have no direct air link now to the capital, Dublin, and of course we have no air link to the United States. So I think a major initiative is required to ensure that the future of Cork Airport is strong, uh, that it is sustainable. We've lost some vital routes, such as Nice, uh, Lisbon. We've seen a reduction of services uh, with Munich. Uh, we had the withdrawal of the Brussels route for a time as well, and I mentioned the transfer of a number of Polish routes uh, from Cork to Shannon by Ryanair. Cork, of course, remains firmly, firmly under the control of the Dublin Airport Autonomy, uh, Dublin Airport Authority, and I think that's one of the issues, Minister, uh, that does need to be examined uh, in relation to the future of the airport. Such is the concern locally, Minister, that a Save Cork Airport Facebook page has been established last November and already has 23,000 likes uh, on that Facebook page. Um, Cork Airport has a debt of around €200 million, Euro, as you know, which, which sits within the consolidated financial accounts uh, of the Dublin Airport Authority. But I'm not suggesting that even an independent debt-free Cork Airport could offer the kind of deals which are now being offered in Shannon, because of course Cork Airport uh, has to pay its staff, has to pay uh, fire service, airport police, uh, security staff, uh, cleaning, maintenance staff uh, and so forth. So we need a sustainable model uh, for the airport. When I come back in, in a moment, I will of course refer to the Heathrow slots and I don't expect you to go into any detail on that and I have a number of suggestions as to how I believe our position could be improved. But I think the starting point, Minister, is to acknowledge that there is a problem at Cork Airport. It's not a problem with local management. They're doing their very best working within tight restrictions, but undoubtedly uh, the new reality of the arrangements at Shannon Airport have had a direct negative impact on Cork Airport and it is a reality we need to face up to or else the decline of Cork Airport will continue and that's something none of us want to see. Thank you. Minister, four minutes. Uh, thank you, Cahulloch, and thank Deputy McGrath for raising this matter. Uh, Dublin Airport Authority, as the Deputy is aware, is the body charged with statutory responsibility to manage, to operate and to develop Dublin and Cork airports. It operates under a clear commercial mandate, is entirely funded from its own resources and receives no government funding support. As such, any plan to address the reduction of services at Cork Airport and improve its competitiveness with other airports is a matter for DAA and for Cork Airport management. It is not a matter in which I have a direct role. Also, 
any decision by an airline in relation to which routes they will serve or which routes they will cut is a matter for that airline. The airline's decision will be based on their own commercial judgment, taking account of the demand for services. That said, however, I am very conscious of the importance of Cork Airport for business and for tourism in the Cork region. Since coming into office, I have met the Chair and Chief Executive of DAA. I visited Cork Airport and met the Managing Director and some local public representatives to discuss the challenges and opportunities for growth that exist at the airport. I have also had the opportunity to meet with the Cork Chamber of Commerce and Cork Airport and its future was a prominent topic in that meeting. As a result, I am well aware of and concerned at the continuing decline in passenger numbers at Cork. It was because of this decline that the Cork Airport Development Council was established under an initiative of my predecessor with the intention of bringing key local stakeholders together to foster a common understanding of issues of concern, identify potential opportunities for growth, and to address the operating performance of the airport. The Council is chaired by the Chairman of DAA and comprises senior representatives from the tourism and business sectors in the Cork region who are actively engaged in achieving the goals set for the Council. Furthermore, Following the restructuring of the state airports under the State Airports Act of 2014, Cork Airport was provided with a new management structure aimed at putting the airport on a sound footing to manage and develop its business on a competitive, commercially driven basis. In addition, two of the members of DAA Board represent Cork, thereby ensuring that issues pertaining to Cork Airport are considered at the highest level. The new structure is bedding down, and I understand the airport, DAA and the CADC are focusing their efforts on identifying new route markets and developing new services. I do believe there are opportunities, particularly in the tourism sector, to grow incoming passenger numbers in the Cork region. I am aware that DAA has attractive incentive programmes available that encourage the introduction of new routes and services. I also understand from Tourism Ireland that there are opportunities under its cooperative marketing initiative to encourage the introduction of new services and to increase capacity on existing routes. Ultimately, however, creating new services and growing inbound tourism depends on the availability of competitive access and ensuring that potential visitors have a reason to visit. Cork Airport, the DAA and the DACC, excuse me, and the CADC, along with the regional airport stakeholders, should be pursuing, and I know they are pursuing, every opportunity to highlight the tourism product that is available in the catchment area of the airport. I am aware that DAA's objective is to halt the decline in passenger numbers in the short term and to return Cork Airport to growth in the future. And I'm very confident that they and Cork Airport Management, working with stakeholders in the region, can achieve this objective. Thank you. Deputy Michael McGrath. Yeah, thank you, Lasky and Corla. Uh, Minister, thank you for your reply. Minister, clearly any suggestion that the Cork Heathrow slots could be lost over time um, would be absolutely devastating for Cork Airport and for the region. And I want to emphasise that point to you in the strongest possible terms. And I know you won't comment in detail, uh, but the suggestion that IAG is giving a commitment that the Heathrow slots would be used for uh, Irish routes for the next five years um, is in no way adequate and in, in no way meets the concerns which are being legitimately expressed. Um, because after five years, um, Cork could well be first in the far line to lose those slots. A number of suggestions, Minister, I want to make to you. One is the National Aviation Policy, um, which makes very little reference to Cork Airport. Um, in contrast, for Shannon Airport, it talks about an international aviation services centre, um, developing an aer aero industry hub, centre of excellence for business aviation. No such reference or commitment to Cork Airport, and I think that's something you need to look at. The possibility of a marketing fund, regional air connectivity fund, which what 
is what they have developed in the UK, for example, uh, could be of immense benefit to Cork. In 2011, your predecessor commissioned a report from consultants, uh, Booz and Company uh, submitted a report which rec recommended Cork stay within the DAA but could be given greater local autonomy in respect of commercial decision making. That's something which should be revisited. And then looking at ourselves, and I say this is a Cork based TD and there are 19 TDs in Cork, I think all of us uh, need to work more closely together uh, in respect of issues such as Cork Airport. Uh, and I will be suggesting to my colleagues that we would establish um, a group, the Friends of Cork Airport or Octus Group for example, to lobby you and others and key stakeholders to make sure that the future of the airport remains firmly in the, on the agenda and that Cork Airport is put on a sustainable footing because at the moment, Minister, it is in decline. That decline is likely to continue unless something changes and I would ask you to look positively at some of the suggestions I've made there which in my view would go a long way uh, to arresting that decline and putting the airport on a sustainable footing going forward and hopefully position, positioning itself uh, for growth again uh, in the years ahead. Thank you. Minister to, to conclude. Thank you, Lasky uh, uh, Just in response to the different points there that Deputy McGrath brought to me, uh, first in relation to the, uh, his uh, observations and points there in relation to his slots Locks and Cork Airport, um, I do appreciate you acknowledging the constraint that I am under in relation to it, but what I want to reiterate to you, Deputy, is that I'm very much aware, and this is a point that Deputy Dooley is making very strongly to me on your behalf, I can assure you, that national connectivity has very, very strong regional dimensions. And I have said again and again uh, that access in and out of our country is a vital way in which any potential offer would be evaluated and obviously the role of, our, um, of our, all of our airports and the contribution they make to that is absolutely essential um, and will be um, a very important consideration that we will use in evaluating the proposal. Uh, as I have said before, there is far more at stake here than a share price. As important as that share is, there are other considerations and they are foremost in our mind too. In relation to the different points that you put to me there, in relation to marketing support and a, you know, a further change in the management structure or set up for Cork Airport, just so you're aware, Deputy, and I'm sure you're, you're, you've seen the fruits of this already, in 2014 alone, uh, Tourism Ireland invested €385,000 in cooperative campaigns which featured Cork Airport as a gateway to Ireland. And of this, a large portion of that money um, focused exclusively on Cork Airport. Uh, because I am very much aware, as you are, that the Cork region has so much to offer from a tourist point of view, not to mention, of course, in all the very important foreign direct investment and local enterprise that is located there. It's located so strategically in relation to the Wild Atlantic Way and is already making much of that. Uh, but the kind of marketing campaigns that I've referred to have played a very uh, important part in the past in trying to support demand in Cork Airport. Uh, the other point that you put to me there in relation to further autonomy there, we have just seen changes take place in the management structure within Cork Airport that are now bedding down, including Cork Airport, have, have representation on the board of DAA. And I would I'm certain that they will be able to play an important role in responding back to the change that is there. And then the point you put to me there in relation to the role of Cork Airport in the national aviation policy. I'm looking very carefully at the national aviation policy at the moment in light of a number of things that are happening. Um, and an important consideration for me is to look at what is going to be the framework that we can put in place to ensure that all of our airports do have a secure future. In the, a secure future. Obviously, there is much at play here that I'm not in a position to uh, influence, uh, but I want to reiterate again that ensuring that Cork Airport does have a secure and prosperous future is important to me as Minister, but I do believe that with the people that are there and the structure that is in place, that they're currently well positioned to respond to those challenges.